It's the first of the Gladiators' quarterfinals as Gail, Janine, Greg and Tom all attempt to take one step closer to that £100,000 prize fund. Last time it was hard. I want to smash you right up. This time it's going to be even harder. No mistakes, no second chances. It is all over. And for one contender, there'll be heartbreak. Medic! Who'll be our first two semi-finalists of the series? Find out right now on Gladiators. Possibly some tears. Oh yes, it's the quarterfinals and things are about to get fierce. 32 contenders took on the challenge of facing our gladiators and just 16 made it through to the quarterfinals. They're either brave or foolish, but four contenders have returned to compete for a share of a £100,000 prize and the title of series champion. And hoping to stop them in their tracks is this angry mob. Be on your feet for the gladiators! <laughs> Enigma Tornado Inferno Oblivion Panther Predator Tempest The Mighty Destroyer Brute force of Battle Axe! Oh yes! So, the competition's heating up. Four mortals return tonight for another fierce battle of speed and strength against our almighty gladiators. But our gladiators are out for revenge and the contenders are not running scared. Something's gonna have to give. So let's see who's hoping to make it through to the semi-finals tonight. It's Greg, Tom, Gail and Janine! We last saw head of PE Gail eight weeks ago when she was one of the fastest contenders on the Eliminator. Competing in front of my friends and family and the children from my school was absolutely amazing. Two, one, but it wasn't an easy victory. Gail was defeated by Battle Axe on Earthquake. What do you make of Battle Axe? Uh, she's beatable. Disqualified on Hit and Run. And wrenched from the wall by Tempest. If I was up against Tempest again, I definitely could beat her on the wall. In a nail-biting eliminator, Gale started one second behind her opponent Liz. There was very little in it. Only when Liz slipped on the travelator did Gale make it to the blocks first. I've got my pupils and staff, my family and friends all supporting me in the quarterfinals, and I'm not going to let them down. So, Gale's going to kick things off in our first event, and she's hoping she's going to be left high and dry. It's Jewel! Now, your first event is a new event for you. How do you think you're going to get on? Just going to go for it. Try and stay on as long as I can, keep myself nice and low. Well, best of luck, Gail. You're the first to face our gladiators tonight. And waiting and ready to pounce is Panther. Topcat Panther was unbeaten in her 12 first heat duels. Gail's two stone lighter. Can she knock Panther off her perch? <laughs> Gail never did this event in her heat, so it must be daunting to face it for the first time in the quarter-final. Contender ready! Gladiator ready! On guard! Three, two, one! That battle 
to Manson. Panther strikes the first blow. Oh, it's crucial in this event. Gale hasn't been thrown yet. She's turned around, trying to defend herself against those blows. Panther is relentless, though, and Gale needs to keep hitting if she wants to stay on here. There's no stopping Panther now, and Gale has been blown off course. Another win on the board for Panther, and a swim back to shore for Gale. A disappointing start for her. Baby, one more time. How did you keep your balance like that? I don't know what he was doing. <laughs> Going around in circles. Just wanted to keep really low, try and stop, try and block the head yeah, look at that. <laughs> I should have stayed on there. I think I just chucked off and jumped. I should have just taken a little bit more and given it a bit more. OK. Well, let's see if your competitor does any better. RAFPT instructor Janine set a record on show one, staying on her feet in duel for 29 seconds. To be a quarterfinalist, it's everything really. It's just one step closer, beating the other contenders to get to that final. And having nearly beaten Panther, she talked the talk and walked the walk on Powerball. Just put them on their bums, really hard, turn, spin, kill them. But got flung to defeat for a second time by Panther on the pyramid. Starting 4.5 seconds behind on the Eliminator, she overtook the struggling Carly on the cargo net, and the rest was history as she stormed ahead to win. Since the heat, my life's got a whole lot better. My boyfriend Rory um, proposed to me, and the only thing that's going to top that is being a Gladiators winner. Great to see you again, Janine. And is your fiancé here? Yeah, he's over there, Rory. Time you were here, you played Jewel. You managed to, to stay on for 29 seconds, which was brilliant. Yeah. Are you going to do better tonight? Yeah, we're going for the 30 today, and if I can, why not take it down? Oh, yeah. Actually, <laughs> talking of Panther, you said last time you were going to proper smash her. Yeah. Are you going to do that? I hope so, yeah, definitely. Well, good luck. <laughs> See you on the other side, Janine. Thank you. <laughs> Beat a record. Panther doesn't think so. On guard. Three, two, one. Panther in quickly again, striking the first blow. But Janine gets in a couple of hits herself. Panther giving her a real battering now. Janine standing firm. But eventually down she goes, down to the depths below. Panther delighted. Another two wins in the bag for her. But Janine must be gutted. She only lasted 12 seconds. One more time. There's blokes who don't want to go up against Panther on Jewel. So you did mention uh, earlier on, Janine, the machine, that you were going to smash her. But it didn't quite work out. Was that just fighting talk? No, definitely not. Um, she really got into a good rhythm on that. Um, Started at the beginning, I got in and got jammed, and because I got so high with it, she could get those body shots, and as I tried to pull round, mm. just couldn't get a clean one after. She seemed to be doing a lot of body shots as well, now you're on the edge. Now did it? really well. I've got to say to you as well, Janine, um, you are going to face her later on in power, but how are you feeling about that? Well, it's going to be hard, but get up and keep going. I love your attitude. So, let's look at the scores after the ladies' first battle. Proving she's no pushover, Panther leaves both girls on zero. So, after the first event, Gal and Janine have yet to score. Next, it's time to bring back the boats. Get ready for a big dose of testosterone. Greg's up first and looking to give him some serious stick is Spartan. Spotty pants! Spotty pants! Spotty pants! Well, it started with 32 contenders. Only 16 made it through to the quarterfinals. Four contenders are fighting back for a second time and geared up for another bout with our gladiators. Before the break, Gail and Janine fought for survival on Jewel. The men are up next, and first is 27-year-old Greg, and he's from Bristol. He's the smallest man. He's the smallest male contender in the quarterfinals and gave the gladiators a run for their money when we met him last week. To be a quarterfinalist in Gladiators, I mean, that does make you feel a small part of the elite. On Greg's way to victory, Tornado overstepped the mark in duel, but there was a disappointment in Powerball. Two points. I've got the middle basket, then, I? And a first for Gladiators when Greg made it to the top of the pyramid. <laughs> Scoring in every event, Greg started the Eliminator with an eight and a half second lead. Victory seemed certain, but he nearly lost it all on the Travelator. Quite recently, my nan passed away. She would have been the biggest screamer in the crowd. I think about her often, and knowing that she would have been here to support me means the world to me. Now, Greg, last 
time you were on Jewel, you were up against Tornado. Spartans up there this time. How do you feel about that? Well, I was actually expecting Tornado to come back for revenge, but if he's too scared, then okay, it's fair enough. Um, and about Spartan, well, I'm just glad it's not Panther. <laughs> well, good luck to you, Greg. It's time to go head to head with Spartan. Eight times so far in the series and never got wet. Will Greg be the first contender to give Spartan a drenching? Fiance Charnia cheering Greg on. Spartan's taller by nine inches. Will that give him a crucial advantage? Three. Another win, and Greg, who scored the full 10 points last time, gets nothing. That wasn't the plan, was it? No, that did not go to plan. That hurt as well. I mean, he was clever that time. He waited for me to make the move. And then, uh, so I went for it, and then he got me twice. Two big hits, and that was it, really. OK, let's see how your competitor gets on. Last to face Jewel is 27-year-old Tom from Shrewsbury. Scorer in Powerball in the heats, Tom made more enemies than friends the last time we met him on Gladiators. I'm over the moon to get through to the quarterfinals, over the moon. Tom was off to a humiliating start on Jewel when Spot knocked him off after just three seconds. He is strong, isn't he? He's quite pretty. As he climbed the pyramid, his popularity slipped down. Come get me someone decent, I want someone decent. And things were no better on Powerball. I want to smash you right up. But Tom rose above it all, gaining himself a 4.5 second lead and a nail-biting eliminator. It was Tom's sheer strength on the handbikes that pulled him through. First and foremost, I want to be Gladiator champion. But secondary, if I won the prize money with the family on the way, can't be better. Tom faces his old adversary Oblivion later in Powerball, but first, can he get revenge on Spartan? On guard! Three, two, one! And the rematch begins. Both Gladiator and Contender are really up to this. They're both standing firm, but that's a big hit from Spartan. And Tom goes down. Spartan takes the glory. Job done again. And Tom leaves the pool with spirits dampened. Woody, and I'm afraid no points. Come here, Woody. We had a great interview at the start. We said what we were going to try and do. He hits you and you, your legs just wobbling and you don't feel too bad and then suddenly just one more hit and then you're just off and you can't, you can't regain it. <sighs> For a man in a skirt, he ain't bad to be fair. For a man in a skirt, yeah. Okay, well, the evening is well underway. Let's have a look at the scoreboard after the first event. After the first quarter-final event, our gladiators are on top form. Greg and Tom both failed to score. Pods are worth two points and the centre pod is worth five points. Gail, you're up against Battle Axe. Do you think you're going to be able to get around Battle Axe? She's got the size, but I'm hoping I've got the speed and the, the ability to move away from her. OK, well, Gail, good luck to that. And Janine, you're up against Panther now. She beat you on Jewel. Are you going to be looking to try and escape her clutches? Yeah, I think I need to. She's a, a bigger size and strong, mm. so I need to use my speed there and not try and take her out. It's not going to work. OK, well, good luck to Janine the Machine and Gail Fools! Best of luck to both of you girls. See you on the other side. Let's hand over to John Anderson. He's the man. He's the man. Contenders! Captain of the RAF basketball team, Janine showed off her skills impressively in the heat. She'd be hoping for a repeat performance tonight. Three, two, one! Off they go. And Janine smacked down straight away. Can Gail do any better with her first attempt? No! Battle Axe gets in her way. Panther doing a brilliant job guarding the pod. Meanwhile, Battle Axe is all over Gale. Still no points for the contenders. Both finding it really tough here. Janine off and running again. So is Gale, but it bounces off. The crowd disappointed. She's not giving up, though. And this time, she hits the jackpot for her first two points. Just about halfway through now. Have the contenders got enough energy left to keep going here? And Janine tries her luck with a long shot.
now, but misses. Can Gail do any better? She's off again, dodging backlash, but no, so unlucky. Janine's fiancé, Rory, can see the clock ticking away. Can she put something out of the bag here? In fact, it's Gail who scores again. Another two points for her. Janine struggling with Panther, getting nowhere. Gail scores again, brilliant, another two points. But Janine just can't shake off Panther at all. And in the dying seconds, Gail scores again. A fantastic performance. She'll be thrilled with her efforts. But I wonder what Janine's basketball teammates are thinking of her performance. Come across, girls. So, uh, Gail, I've got to come to you first. Eight points. How did you find it? How was battle like? Shabby at the beginning, but once I got into it and got in the swing of it, loving it. Yeah, I was hoping I could get a few more in. A lot of them bouncing out their edges, which was a bit annoying. So, battle legs, i got to say, the girls were pretty, uh, pretty good. I'm still waiting for the gay off force, actually. It was still a bit of a breeze. Oh, yeah, OK. Well, we've got to ask Janine. OK. OK, before we get back to the gladiators, so what about you, Janine? Janine the machine, no points, up against Panther again. Yeah. It's pretty hard. Hard, but just disappointed. I turned and twisted and just didn't use some of my pace. Okay, and Panther, what was your plan for Janine? Was you just said, right, because she's sharp, she's quick, you saw, you've seen her before. I'm just quicker. I'm a quick cat, what can I say? She's a quick cat. So, well done to Gail. Unlucky Janine. Let's have a look at how the scores are telling up after two events. Gail powers ahead with eight points. Janine stuck on zero. Up next and ready to duck, dive and hopefully come out alive is Greg and Tom. And taking them on in a game of human dodgems is Atlas, Destroyer and Oblivion. Greg, Tom, you've both played this before. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah, I am. I mean, last time I was here, I thought I did well, but I only came away with two points, so I need to make sure I come away with at least ten. You're, of course, up against Atlas, who you beat at the top of Pyramid, famously, I have to say. Mm. Are you worried that he might just be, you know, trying to get revenge on you for that, Greg? He's definitely trying to get revenge. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, last time you scored a phenomenal 13 points. Can you beat that? Um, last time I was up against uh, the big O, Oblivion. He's here again for me, so uh, I'm ready to go into the ozone, is it? How many points? Go on, tell us. Let's go 13 again, shall we? 13, yeah, OK, let's do that. Good luck to both of you. Let's hand over to John Anderson. Well, confident chat from the boys there. Contenders, ready! Let's see if their actions speak as loud as their words. Greg off really swiftly here, but it's Tom who scores first. And now Greg, two points each. Jeffrey Anderson keeping a close eye on Tom's clash with Destroyer. Things getting rough out there, but Greg goes for the centre part and scores five points. Fancy footwork by Greg. He goes for a long shot. He's missed this time. Meanwhile, Tom moves into top gear and another two points for him. Tom taken down by Oblivion. Greg's on the move and almost collides with Tom. Atlas sends Greg okay? crashing, and that Keep must have hurt. He's soldiering on. Greg's back on his feet. The crowd really loving this. Both contenders feeling the strain, but Tom's going for broke. And that's a massive five points. He said he was going for 13, and he could make it. Tom in superb form here. And another two points on the board. The crowd going wild. The gladiators are taking a hammering. Tom is unstoppable. He's got the 13 points he was looking for. It's Greg's turn again, and he scored as well. Amazing. That was a truly astonishing game. Tom gave it everything. Greg took a real battering at times. Medic. And John Anderson has called in the medical Medic. team here to look at Greg's injured hand. A worried silence descends over the arena. The gladiators got more and more frustrated then as the contenders were running rings around them and the more frustrated they got, the tougher they got. So no wonder Tom and especially Greg are feeling battered and bruised here. John, how good was that by the wow, way? Wow, that was phenomenal. Greg scored nine points and believe it or not, the man who forecast that he was going to get 13 points did it again. He got it! Woo! All right! We got it coming in, guys. Firstly, before we go on, How's your hand? I mean, it's all right. Atlas is a big guy. Yeah. When he lands on top of you, your wrist certainly lays it. <laughs> it just seen every time I looked up, there was two guys stood in front of me, so did my best to get around both of them. That was it there, Greg. I think that was where you, you hurt yourself yeah, there, wasn't was, it? That was a smackdown. Nine points. Happy with that? Yeah, I'll take that. You said you wanted ten, but hey, nine's not bad. And what about Wardy, Wardy? You and Oblivion were really going 
going for it. There we go. Whoop, whoop, see you later. Whee! <laughs> that was good fun. Yeah. That wasn't so much good fun, that hurt. <laughs> and uh, the big O, your man gave you. He got another 13 points against you. What are you saying? Ian, you know more than anybody else that the big O rarely takes his hat off to somebody, but Tom, there you go. I'm not finished! <laughs> Lad, you brought your A game. Well, credit where credit's due. Okay, well, uh, we've got to the halfway mark. Let's recap on the scores. So both men are off the mark. Greg has nine points, Tom 30. It's time for our third event and our gladiators are raring to take a swing at our contenders and send them for a swim. It's Hang Tough. Hang Tough. Gail, do you like this event? I do enjoy Hang Tough. Just hope this time I can get further across to score more points. Fantastic, you sound confident. Good luck to you, you'll need it because you're facing ice. Just over nine stones, she's the leanest and maybe the meanest gladiator on Hang Tough. No one's broken ice in this event. Pulled down in her heat after 28 seconds, Gail's hoping to do much better this time. Dunder! goes Gare with a long reach out to the side. She said she enjoys this event. I'm sure she'd enjoy it a whole lot more if she could score some points here. Ice making the slow but calculated move towards Gale. This gladiator really knows what she's doing up there. Gale contemplates her next move. What can she do here? She swings by and right past Ice. She's right next to the gladiator's platform now. And Gale has managed to fend off Ice. She's in the scoring zone. But Ice is locked on, that's bad news for Gale. Can she hang on here? The crowd willing her on. But Ice falls and takes Gale with her, crashing into the water. The gladiator left her with nothing in the end. Whoa, so, so close. I tried to miss out a few things which worked, and then I did a few traversing, which I was really, that was what I was trying to do this time. Um, but I just didn't have that other ring. So. I think that ring, when you went for that ring, it kind of took your momentum away. Yeah, no, definitely, yeah. And yeah. I was stuck there. Ice, when you started off, she seemed to be eluding you there and you kind of caught her up again. Um, Ian, that's my platform, the Gladiator platform, and nobody's going to step foot on it. Well, we, we can't really argue with that, but anyway, well done to you, gal. Janine's up next and hoping to run rings around her is Battleaxe. To wait till the quarterfinals to see Battle Axe on Hang Tough. Can she give Janine the chop? A new event for Janine, and she could really do with picking up some points here. Ladita! A new event for Battle Axe as well. Reminder not to tackle these events at home. Our contenders and gladiators are all highly trained. Remember, Janine here seems to be trying something a little bit different to Gail. Battle Axe with a slightly tentative start. She needs to set her sights on Janine here. Both of them keeping their distance from one another at the moment. The clock ticking away, and Janine really needs to get moving if she wants to reach that gladiator's platform. And I must say, this is a very tame effort from both gladiator and contender. You might have heard that. Even the referee had to remind Battleaxe that she's supposed to attack. Janine trying to build up her swing, edging closer towards the platform, but closer to Battleaxe too. And that's it, Battle Axe has got her, that's what she wanted. She's got the contender in her grip. A fantastic struggle between these two. Janine desperate to get away, but she's off. Battle Axe and Janine plunge into the water together. No points for Janine, but a great effort. 51.4 seconds, so close. Hey. I thought, oh, I can get round. I couldn't quite get the angle on the swing, but I felt a pull. I didn't realise it was only those first few seconds because I still wanted to get to the platform. Yeah. So I thought if I could drop my arm, she might go. Mm. She's got some great thighs on her. Mm. Fair play. Great thighs. <laughs> got to agree with you there. Battleaxe. She could have gone anywhere on those rings and I had it covered. I was ready to catch her no matter what. Well, you heard it here. Let's check out the scores before our ladies tackle the final event.
So neither contender scored on Hang Tough with the Gladiators in great form. Gale has eight points, Janine's yet to score. So they've been clouted, tackled and wrenched from the air, but the girls have still got one more event before they tackle the Eliminator for a second time. Next up on Hang Tough is Greg and he's hoping he can hustle past the muscle of Tornado right after the break. Finalist Gail and Janine took part in the game of aerial chess that is Hang Tough. Now it's time for the boys to swing into action. Greg's up first, he's facing Tornado. With a 100% strike rate, if you meet Tornado on the rings, the only place you're going is down. So, Greg, we saw you um, earlier your hand yep. on the Powerball. How are you doing? Are you okay to carry on because you are going up against the great tornado? Yeah, um, I'm going to need to be okay. And it's, it's fine, it's fine, it's just sore. It's just really painful, but it's is fine. It? Uh, a tornado is very good at this. I've seen him, yeah. he is good, so I'm going to have to be at my best to get this guy. And uh, you did mention that he was scared to face you on duel. <laughs> so um, we put him for you for Hang Tough. You happy about that? Yeah, great, thanks for that. No worries, we aim to please. Good luck. Off you go to position, my friend. We'll speak to you in a bit. Greg must be anxious about going up against Tornado, especially with that injured hand. they go and despite his injury Greg showing good early speed here he managed a change of direction hoping to trick Tornado but Tornado means business up there Greg had better be quick or he'll be in trouble before he knows it Greg's dad looking on anxiously he really needs to make a move now Greg unsure which route to take but he's taken the path that leads straight to Tornado a bad choice trying to fend him off but he's got him in his grip and with all that weight on top of him, he's given up. No points for Greg. The crowd appreciate that great effort, especially in view of his injury, as Greg struggles out of the pool. Oh, bad luck. Yeah. How are you feeling? All right, I mean, Tornado, tornado is very, very good at that. And he was, he's just so quick. He, he reads the situation really well, and, he, and he's there. I'm trying to push him off, but he's got, like, a vice grip. And forget it. As a nice little head dive as well, so cheers for that. Tornado. Very impressive, I have to say. Boring, what the... This guy is against the best. This is what Tornado is about. No mistakes, no second chances. End of. But, Greg, you were very fair about him there, so I don't know what that was all about. Let's see if Tom can beat that as he goes up against Spartan. He's got his work cut out here with an impeccable record. Spartan's never been taken down on Hang Tough. So, Tom, I know I said it in Jewel. You've got to believe me, I really feel that this is your one. What do you think? Yeah, a little bit nervous, a little bit nervous. He's Spartan up there. He's, he's beat me three times now. He's got a bit of an edge on me, but um, you never know, eh? You never know. OK, well, good luck to you, my friend. Uh, off you go. Hoping it's fourth time lucky. Ladies are ready! And they're off, and it looks as though Tom has decided on. And they're off, and it looks as though Tom has decided on the unusual tactic here of heading round the side of the grid. But that won't fool Spartan, who's quickly following him and swinging closer already. Remember, Tom's already been beaten three times by Spartan, so he's playing for pride here as well as points. But he can't seem to get into a rhythm. Spartan's long legs reach towards him. Tom bravely defends himself, but he's in danger now, all right. Spartan has locked on here, and he's celebrating already, even before the job's finished. That's confidence for you. Getting to work on Tom's grip, but Tom is holding on. Perhaps Spartan will be wishing he hadn't celebrated quite so soon here. He's holding on, but he's not in the scoring zone, so he's wasting valuable energy before the next event. And finally, he's down. 15 stone of Spartan through too much. So close, Woody. Woody, you said it wasn't your favourite one, but you nearly hung on, man. Is that your plan in the end? Uh, I was hanging on, but to be honest with it, the breath was getting that bad, I just had to let go. I, I hear you. Bad breath can do that to you. Bad breath can do that to you. Here he comes, <laughs> trying to defend myself, but then he got his legs right up high next to him. 
I thought he was going around my neck at one point. There we go. He gave, me, he gave me a little bit of verbals in the ear as well, but uh, he's saying, does my hair look good? Uh, does my dress look good? <laughs> <laughs> so Spartan, in hindsight, I should have got, got to work on his hands, getting him down, he's a strong lad. So what about the fact that, that are you going to get mints? Are you going to sort your breath out? Or what are we going to do about that? This is a false allegation. This is a false, you know, I mean, <sighs> It's true, it's a false allegation. His breath <laughs> is quite fresh. But anyway, let's have a look at the scoreboard and see how you and Greg are shaping up. So in this first quarter final, the gladiators again get the better of the contenders. Greg's still on nine points, Tom's got 13. Very soon our contenders will go head to head as they clamber their way through the eliminator, but not before they faced the wall. The wall. the girls tonight and ready for the ankle grabbing action it's tempest and enigma contenders you will go on my first whistle gale up against the deadly tempest again for janine it's her first one-on-one -on -one encounter with enigma three two one because this is the quarterfinals, the contenders only get a seven second head start rather than ten. In the heat, Gale managed to stay on for 40 seconds. Both girls have made a good start here. Janine just slightly in the lead. And now Tempest has grabbed hold of Gale again. That's trouble. Gale has a very firm grip, but Tempest is really going for it here. Gale hanging on with all her might as Janine storms ahead. She's over. Her fans delighted. And Enigma furious. Gale still hanging on, only one hand on the wall now. Still time on the clock, and finally, Tempest prizes are off. Janine, this was a very hard event. Enigma is pretty quick there, and you did it. How are you feeling? Absolutely on top of the world, fantastic. I just focused completely on that. Could hear her come in, and it's great, because you can make sure you go quicker. And there could not go. wait to get up there. So you're on the scoreboard, you must be delighted. Yeah, definitely. Well done. Finally, yes. Gail, bad luck again, Tempest got you. I was just trying to grip on for dear life. She was flying me loads more than last time. You are very strong, I have to say. <laughs> Not strong enough on this one, unfortunately. Never mind, looking forward to Eliminator. Yes, very much so. And Tempest, just quickly, did you ever doubt yourself there? Because she was holding on for dear life, quite frankly. Well, again, yeah, she had the amazing grip the first time I came up against her, and she had really good grip again today, and I, would, I was not going to let her get away with it, and I got her down. You did. OK, well, well done, girls. That was your final event. Let's have a look at the scores and see which one of you will be getting a head start. So, after trailing for the whole show, that win on the wall gives Janine a one-second head start in the Eliminator. She's got ten. Gail stays on eight. So is our boys' final event before they face the Eliminator for a second time. They're going to have to quite literally get a grip. And looking to hold them back from winning this event is Predator and Tornado. Contenders, you will go on my first whistle. Gladiators, you will go on my second whistle. Three... Two, one. This, a new event for both contenders. Greg quick on his feet, and with Predator on his tail, he'll need to be He's flying up the wall. But those seven seconds have gone, and Predator leaps into action. Even with his injury, Greg still out in front, but Predator is getting closer, and now he latches on, and the kill is complete. He's chewed him up and spat him out. And Tornado's got Tom by the foot. Can he hold on? Now he's grabbed his shorts and they've given way. Tornado slips and surely now Tom can make a dash for it. Tornado's back on the wall, the fight's still on. But Tom's going to get there by the seat of his pants. Or should I say without them? A brilliant result for Tom. And look how fired up he is now. Come on! Be happy with that 10 points. Uh, Greg is fast, very fast, so all the points are going to come in handy. I've got to say as well, Tornado is quick as well, but you just got away from him. I felt him on my foot and it was a tough one on my foot. He went for my shorts then as well, and my shorts just slipped, and uh, that was it. Your pants look torn. Turn around, let me have a look at you. Hey! Come on! Tornado, you can't be happy with that, are you? What can I say? I had him, I had him in my grasp when he ripped, so. 
sounds a bit of an excuse to me, Tornado. Greg, you didn't have much luck up there either. What happened no. with you? I wasn't flying up there, but I was moving fairly quickly. There he is already, one jump, and he's, he's on my feet. Okay. You can hear the thumping coming up the wall, and it is coming quicker and quicker. At this point, I'm, this, that's not my route at all. I'm sort of panicking, trying to get away, and he's got me. Done. And how's your wrist, Greg? It's all right. Yeah, it's a bit painful, but I have to soldier on. Predator, quick word with you. You must be thrilled about that. That was, that was a great performance for you, wasn't it? This is the Predator. I come, I see, I grab you. Fair enough. Fair enough. OK, let's see how that event has affected the scores. That win, Tom has a 14-point lead going into the first quarterfinal eliminator, and that means a huge seven-second head start over Greg. This is what you get when you mess with our gladiators. Remember, if you want up-to-date news, views and behind-the-scenes gladiator access, you can go to our website. Details are on the screen now. So our quarterfinals have taken a brunt of a gladiator fashion, but they have no time to rest because in a moment they'll be tackling the toughest event of them all for the second time. It's going to be good. See you after the break. Team 4 contenders clash of our superheroes in spandex as they push them through dual, powerball, hang tough and the wall. But do you think they've had enough? I don't think so, because they're all limbered up and ready to take on the toughest challenge of all. Facing the eliminator for the second time is Gail and Janine. Girls, you've both tasted victory on the eliminator. Is it strange to be facing it again, Gail? No, I just want to get it started now and do it. Now, Janine, you've got a one second head start. Do you think that's enough to clinch it? I think a one second aside, it's in a blink of an eye, but it's the level, level, really, and just go all out. Good luck to both of you. Off you go and get ready. Janine, you will go on my first whistle. Gail, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Janine has a slight lead here, but don't forget that in the heat, Gail's eliminator time was 20 seconds faster than Janine's. Strong swimming from both girls, but it's Janine who holds on to her lead to reach the cargo net first. A job in the RAF means she's used to these tough assault courses, but Gail's giving her a real run for her money here, and she isn't far behind. In fact, it looks like Gail is just inching into the lead. It's very close. They're almost neck and neck. Both women so desperate to win through to that place in the semi-finals and go one step closer to being series champion. Janine has seen her lead blown away already though and Gail has powered through. First to the handbars. Janine's not far behind but Gail showing tremendous strength here making this part of the course look almost easy and she leaves Janine swinging in her way as she sets off towards the pyramid. Janine has seen her rival sprint away. Gail's giving it everything now. That place in the semi-final in sight, and she's really focused. Onto the zip line she goes, flying towards a place in the last four. And as she clambers off the mat, Janine is nowhere in sight. Is there any way Janine can catch Gail now? now? Only the travel mate are left for Gail, and she's taken that in her stride, and she's made it. Janine battles on, she's lost her shoe somewhere. She's also lost the chance of glory. What a race, Gail Seals victory. Congratulations, both of you, absolutely amazing there. But Gail, you won it, you were brilliant. Well done. Thanks, that was much tougher than last time. I was just so much more tired, yeah. yeah. Felt it in my legs tonight, definitely, yeah. I almost thought my legs were gonna give way, but luckily it got me to the top. Janine, awesome. What did you find difficult? What slowed you down, though, there, Janine? When I came up the cargo net, I wasn't as smooth as what I was on the last one. Definitely. And then I kept going, just thought, I'm not going to let her go. I want to keep staying with her all the time. Well, congratulations, both of you. But well done, Gail. We'll see you back here for the semi-finals. Go off and see your families, girls. You deserve it. Well, the girls put in a fantastic effort. Let's go back to the start and catch up with the boys. OK, we saw Greg injure his arm back in Powerball. He bravely struggled on through Hang Tough and the wall, but the injuries got worse. And our team of medics has given him some bad news. Greg, what did they say to you? Yeah, unfortunately, um, the medical team turned around and said that uh, I'm unable to hold my weight properly and therefore it'd be dangerous to do anything in the eliminator like the zip line. Um, so therefore, that's it. Uh, I'm out. I'm really, really gutted for you, my friend. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm devastated, and to be honest, it's will eat away at me forever, this one, but there's nothing I can do about it now. These things happen, so just got to wish these guys all the best, and uh, I hope they do well. Nice one, mate. That's very magnanimous. But I've got to explain the rules. The rules of Gladiators is when a contender is unable to continue, they must be replaced by a standby. And that standby is Andy Bell. He was our fastest runner-up from the heats. Ironically, the man that Greg beat to get to these quarterfinals. And Andy, I know this isn't the way you want to get involved in it, but, you know, your opportunity's knocking and you've got to open the door. Exactly. The opportunity's come. I've taken it. Greg's done all the hard work today. I'm not going to pull any punches and I'm going to go for it. OK, well, good luck to you. And Tom, I've got to say to you, Tom, you've got a seven-second start over Andy now. Um, you're going to try and make that count? I'll be honest, uh, it's not an ideal way to start uh, changing your opponent, but, I mean, I'm more focused now than I was before. Listen, I just want to say the very best to the both of you. Um, good luck. It's a semi-final place for the winner, so I'll see you down the end, OK? Good luck, guys. Great, I'm really sad. Yeah. Tom, you will go on my first whistle. Andy... You will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Devastation then for Greg. Heartbreaking for him, but the race must go on. And Tom, with that big lead, is already reaching the cargo net. Andy has started now. He's got a lot of ground to make up, but he's a strong swimmer. His eliminator time in the heats was only five seconds slower than Tom's. And as Andy makes the cargo net, Tom seems to be struggling. His leg got caught in the net. But he's still first up towards the cotton reels. Now remember, unlike his opponent, Tom has got the four events of the night behind him. So this is going to be a real challenge. Will he tire against the fresher legs of Andy? But he's still going strong, even though Andy is only just behind now. Tom knows he's got to be careful here. One slip could incur a time penalty and give Andy the chance to take the lead. Both men really into a rhythm now. Andy's going for it, and he's catching Tom off. It's getting incredibly close, this. Tom just manages to stay in front and heads off towards the pyramid. He's fought so hard all night, he's not going to give up that place in the semi-finals now. Andy still not letting it up, though. He'll be feeling the pressure. He's racing for Greg as well as for himself, and he'll want to do him proud. Tom first down the zip wire, that place in the semi-finals, up for grabs. But Tom knows that the Travelator could still ruin everything, and to lose now would be so cruel. Tom takes a deep breath and flies up the Travelator. Oh, a little slip at the top, but he's OK. A quick glance to see where Andy is, and he's through the wall, and a place in the semi-finals is his. Come sit down, Tom. And come over, mate. It was a great effort. It was a great effort, and you got Andy to, a chance right at the death there, and you nearly took it, but you come up against a really, really keen competitor in Tom. Tom, how'd you feel, mate? You've done it. Semi finals. Come on! <laughs> Get in there! <laughs> You've got to do all that again in the semi finals. You're looking forward to that? Bring it on! Come on! I've got to turn to you, Andy, because you got.